If you talk to an experienced photographer, you may hear them use the word brackets. And what happens here is a photographer will often take several photos of the same scene with slightly different camera settings. Now, this was done in the old days just for safety, to make sure that as you shot a scene, you didn't perhaps miss some of the key details. But over time, as software tools evolved, people started realizing that they can combine these multiple exposures together to get the perfect image. Now, in the old days, both in the darkroom and in early digital tools, people would look at parts of a photo, maybe latching onto the sky to pull that part out, and then developing the mountain one way and the foreground another way, and then compositing those images back together. I find that when I'm shooting, there are ideal times to shoot. You might have thought about shooting at sunrise or during golden hour. Of course, that might mean you've only got two good hours to shoot each day, and if you're like me, that doesn't really work. Sometimes I'm traveling with family or for business, and in order to get the shots I want, I go out during a lunch break or when it's convenient to me, not when it's necessarily great photographically. As such, I often shoot under tough lighting conditions. When you're shooting in the midday sun, it can be very difficult to actually see everything. I'm sure your eye can compensate as you turn and look through the scene, and you might be able to adjust for the sky and then look at your subject and pull things off, but the camera doesn't have that flexibility. Now, when I'm shooting, there are also other times when it's hard to show the entire range of details. For example, with interiors. Maybe you're shooting in a museum or a large open space, and there is natural light, skylights overhead, or windows. Well, it's quite possible that you have more dynamic range than the camera can represent with a single exposure. This is where bracketed photos come in. Now, let me just show you a quick example in the software, and then we'll explore this in much greater depth later. What I have here is a simple street scene with the base exposure and two additional exposures to help preserve details. You'll notice, for example, that the base exposure looks pretty good. When we choose to underexpose the details, some of the subtle areas like the highlights in the roof here come back. We don't have clipping or blown out white areas. And when we overexpose the image by leaving the shutter open longer, just adjusting the shooting speed, now we have more detail in the shadows. Well, what happens here is all the other camera settings tend to stay the same. Typically, the only variable that changes is the amount of time that the shutter is open. So when you shoot from a tripod or a well-held camera for handheld shooting, you can set the camera to shoot brackets, and it will evaluate the scene, think about the amount of settings that are needed in the changes, and calculate the base exposure. Then, the camera will adjust the duration that the shutter stays open, the shutter speed, making it shorter or longer. If it decreases the amount of time, then the picture is going to be underexposed, preserving key details in the highlight area. On the other hand, you'll likely also overexpose the photo by keeping the shutter open longer, and this will bring out some of the details in the shadows that were getting lost. So let's put these pieces together. With Aurora HDR, it's easy enough to load a series of images from a folder and just click the open command. Now what happens is it evaluates all of the images, and I can choose to put these together. I'll choose the option for alignment here, just in case there's any shifting from one photo to the other, and I'll create an HDR image. Let's go ahead and switch to a standard category here, like basic. And you'll see if we click on some of these presets that the software is able to read increased amounts of details. It looks into the image overall, and is able to find those details in the highlights and the shadows and bring them back. Now, this is all done with basic sliders that we'll explore more later, but you'll notice, for example, as I drag over the HDR Enhance, it's able to use the high dynamic range in the image. Key areas like shadows and highlights really come back. In fact, I can recover the highlights, lift the shadows, and really boost the contrast and what we have here is an incredible amount of tone and color packed into a single photo. Now, sometimes people tend to overdo this or they like a stylized look. We'll talk about that later in this course, but it's ultimately up to you. You can get a great looking color image, black and white image, or heavily stylized image with HDR. 
the path that you choose is really going to be up to you as you use the different tools. You'll ultimately develop your own taste, much like you have with a camera, but I want you to realize that HDR is incredibly versatile. So just because you've seen people develop images one way doesn't mean that you have to use the software with the same techniques. Personally, I favor a very natural style of HDR, but I'll show you how to encompass different styles to match your needs.